Hello and welcome to the SWS Classroom Chat. I am connecting with Tejaswini Uma Sudhir and the intention is to discuss the strategy for the mathematics paper for ICSC class 10 students. That's on Friday, the 10th of March. So Teju, uh, you need to give a bit of gyan from your own experience, uh, from your own experience of interacting with students as to what are the common mistakes they made. So history has been done. What should students do in the next three days is what I want to talk about. So what would the first thing you would say they need to do in the next three days? You have studied each and every chapter. Now is the time for revision. You need to thoroughly be revising each and every concept you have learned in the past one year. One thing I would suggest uh, that you do last minute is prepare a formula sheet. As you're revising each and every chapter, Keep writing the formulas. So you keep writing the formulas in one place so that two hours before the exam, you just go through all the formulas and actually remember them and apply them in your exam. Right. So if you have not done it so far, you should be doing that over the next 48 yes. hours so that on the morning of the exam, the 10th of March, maybe the night before the exam on the 9th of March, that's something which you could look at. Now, uh, obviously, this is not the time to look at new books for uh, doing sums from or even understanding concepts. Now is the time for you to look at quality test papers. That's what you need to do. So if you are looking at any of them, there are 35 test papers on the SWS app, 33 of them MCQ and subjective format in uh, chapter wise done. And two of them are full 80 marks paper prepared by our Pranab sir. So you could go and test yourself. In fact, interestingly, one of the papers is a little moderate. The other one is a little tricky. So you get both kinds of papers to solve. Now, uh, Teju, we will go through all the chapters one by one and you could kind of sure. uh, tell what needs to be done. So let's start with trigonometry. What are the common yeah. mistakes that students make in trigonometry? And I was told that a common mistake students make is to put the wrong value of the standard angles or forgetting to check the correct ratios according to the angles given. So how do you um, ensure the students don't make these mistakes? So, for example, a lot of people make mistakes in substituting the angle. Suppose you say tan 60. You should be knowing the value for tan 60 to be using in the question. Um, I have made a video on this uh, before. I'd like you to actually attack this here. And you actually should check it out. Because what I did when I wrote my board exam was that right before my uh, I started writing my exam, at the back of my, in the rough sheet, I actually wrote the table, which was an easy smart method of actually remembering all the angles and their values and I didn't have to when I came to that question there'll at least be two or three trigonometry based questions and I didn't have to at that time think about which angle is what value I just had to look back look at the table it just hardly takes two three minutes to actually write that table and you just look back see the value and substitute it properly in your answer so I think that's the trick as far as trigonometry is concerned, another thing concept which comes in trigonometry is heights and distances. Yep. There's a word problem based question which uh, comes based on trigonometry. And uh, the trick here, sir, is to actually uh, draw the diagram correctly. Uh, look at each and every sentence in the word problem and underline them. You're allowed to underline and draw it as it is in your answer script. Be only if you get your diagram right, will you be able to actually solve the question. Solving is very easy in a heights and distances question. The trick is only to do the diagram properly. Okay, fine. So that's as far as trigonometry along with heights and distances. Let's now move to geometry. But now the diagram obviously must be copied correctly to start with. What else apart from that? Yeah, as you rightly said, diagram has to be copied correctly. And the second part is a lot of reasoning questions as far as geometry is concerned. Um, so one of the most important things out here is that they give marks for the reason you give. Suppose you write in the paper that angle A is equal to angle C. You need to be giving the reason why that is true. So what I did in my paper was that I had two columns. One was what I was proving and second column was the reason why what I was proving is true. So that is what uh, will give you full marks in that particular question. That is one. Second point, um, this is uh, from one of the uh, papers, uh, one of the board exam papers uh, in the previous years. If in a, diag a diagram, in a, there was this question, okay, of a circle and two lines, 
which looked parallel to each other, but the way they were written in the question that they are actually parallel to each other. So what it mean? What I mean to say is that unless explicitly given that line segment AB is parallel to line segment CD, don't assume so. A lot of people lost marks in the question because they assumed it. the diagram was very misleading. It looked like it was a parallel, but it wasn't parallel. parallel. Similarly, you may be given similar questions, similar tricks. So don't assume unless you are told. That is a very important thing in geometry. Other than that, you have constructions. You have already learned different constructions in your syllabus. And um, the trick as far as constructions is concerned is draw it very neatly. Of course, you'll be using a scale. You have to use a very sharpened pencil and uh, try uh, to draw really lightly so that you, even if you have uh, made a mistake, you can correct it immediately. Another uh, point where uh, in the previous years, people made mistakes was um, if you had to draw a right angle, a lot of people just used a protractor, clicked, uh, you know, used uh, where you got 90 degrees and they just uh, picked up that point and drew a line. Whereas you had to use the concept of perpendicular bisectors where you had to draw arcs and then know what your 90 degree line is. Okay, fine. So these are very practical tips that Teju is giving about the mistakes you should definitely try to avoid. Now, there are certain other concepts which students are a little more comfortable with. For instance, probability, mensuration, quadratic equations, statistics, which they find it easier. But again, I mean, when you find something easy and you're a little overconfident about it, that's where probably mistakes happen. Uh, or let's say circles. Uh, any tips on how to approach these so-called easier concepts? As far as mensuration is concerned, uh, the, trick, the trick to actually do well there is know your formulas hmm. by heart. You should be knowing each and every formula very well so that if they say volume of cone, you should immediately know that, okay, fine, this is what I need. Um, also, as far as word problems are considered with concern, uh, the most important thing is that um, as soon as you see the problem, write down what all is given in the problem. Say that H is equal to 10 centimeters. Another important thing is centimeters, meters. You need to always mention, otherwise you actually lose marks. You may think that's really basic, but... Um, that actually carries a lot of uh, marks in your final answer. Um, as far as quadratic equations are concerned, you get tables, right? Um, for example, in a previous board exam paper, there was a question which uh, finally I had to be able to find the root of 37. 37, uh, you need to do the long division method and find the root. That, But then our IC, in our ICC board exam, they actually give you a table in which you can directly find the root of 37. A lot of people mehnat kar rahe the, or they were actually finding the root of 37 and they went only up to two decimal places. Or even if they took it from the table, they still went up to two decimal places or, you know, approximated it. That's not how you do it. If it is given as four decimal places, then go up to use the entire value and do the calculation. That's what they expect. They don't expect you to round off. So please remember this while you're solving quadratic equation. Another... Uh, what people find slightly tricky probably is linear inequalities. Some people, you need to be careful when you are using your signs in linear inequalities. Yep. Uh, on your left, if it is minus, when you go that side, it is plus. You need to be very careful and please concentrate when you are uh, doing this calculation because a lot of people make mistakes in linear inequalities. Mm -hmm. Another very scoring but something where people make a mistake is representing whatever answer you get from the linear inequality mm -hmm. in the number line. Um, the most common mistake is the way in which you are representing. Suppose it is said that from minus 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 3. You need to be representing it properly in the number line. Also, ki minus 2 se 3 se hai or range. So you don't put any values from beyond minus 2, that is minus 3, minus 4, and you don't put any values in the positives as well. Mm -hmm. You need to maintain that consistency to show that the gap between, you need to at least do the number is taraf or do the number is taraf, you need to write so that it looks like a proper valid number line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, uh, when we are looking at the different chapters, I mean, broadly the seven broad uh, units that are there in the syllabus, uh, do you suggest starting with something immediately 
uh, and doing some others uh, in the second half, uh, maybe on the 8th of March. Or it depends from student to student. Some students may be good in geometry, not so good in algebra or the other way around. Does it depend from student to student? It depends from student to student. It depends on what's your strong point, what's your weak point. But I would say like uh, when I was uh, writing my board exam in 2019, um, some chapters like uh, GST, banking, shares and dividend, those three chapters are really scoring chapters, very easy chapters. I think in the entire syllabus, I would uh, say that section is very easy again if you go that side to probability statistics it's simple so i would suggest um uh, you first start with these chapters because they're very scoring hmm. and then go on to um uh, relatively more tricky concepts like um, quadratic equations linear uh, inequalities and chapters like that and similarly you can actually bohat aram se aap syllabus complete kar sakte ho do a lot of this is the time for you to test yourself and if yeah. you don't know revise those concepts yeah you need to unless you test yourself you don't you won't never know what you're weak in instead yeah. of just going through the formulas again and again test yourself dekho ki kya aap wo concept ko apply kar pa rahe ho agar nahi kar pa rahe ho to you go back and study the i think that should be the method you should adopt um, when you are um, studying for your maths exam right yeah. before the board exam yeah uh, now as far as the uh, actual implementation of all this in the examination on the 10th of march is concerned one important point that they need to remember is that they should do the rough work on the same page so that uh, not on the back page because sometimes when you do it on the back page there the value may be something but in your worry anxiety tension you may copy uh, a different thing because something all else may be going on in your mind so it's always preferable to do the rough work on the same page right that yes, always keep your rough work really neat bahut yeah. zyada kaatna it should not be messy because that yeah. you know it, it, it does not um you don't make a very great impression on the examiner if you you know very very messy with your rough work keep it neat yeah and another thing in your in your first 15 minutes um, in your exam select which questions you're going to be doing in section b yeah because that's very useful right. because it, it uh, you finish your section a yeah. and then you can very really peacefully do the selected questions in section b yeah so the big difference between when you uh, took your exam and now is that there are this mcqs which are in section a there is no choice in section a while you have to do four out of five now mcqs obviously you don't have to show the steps process so you can adopt shortcuts Uh, and arrive at the solution whereas in section b i mean in the other uh, non mcq format you need to show the steps does it necessitate a slightly different way of preparing for mcq and the non mcq questions no because uh, see uh, i would say that there's not so much of a difference uh, between how you solve an mcq based question and some and a um you know non mcq three mark question yeah. non mcq based question because uh, at the end of the day it's not like mcq based question ho to ek step mein answer aa jayega the questions they give you are actually questions which are probably relatively simpler but you need to solve see uh, you when you skip steps right steps are not necessary so that you get step marks in even in case your end answer is wrong hmm. it is so that you don't make mistakes anywhere because uh, when you are trying to make too many mind calculations right you tend to make mistakes when you have so much of time i would suggest you do you write the steps you don't lose anything by writing steps mm. of course mcq based questions take less time to solve mm. so you don't need to be writing very reasons that maine ye kiya isi ne kiya of course in an mcq based question but you don't need to skip steps is what i yeah. personally so, feel because I mean, what, why do yeah, you want what, to make it yeah so just to clarify what teju is saying is that when she says write the steps she doesn't mean that in mcq you need to explain the steps she says you could do that in your rough uh, part page part of the work uh, of your answer script do it there and so that you are 200% sure that you have arrived at the correct solution yes if you are very fast with shortcuts maybe you could implement that and cross check it with the steps also but the whole idea is yes. to score an 80 on 80 in the mcq you still need to write only the correct option and whatever is the answer there you are not expected to show the steps in mcqs so just for clarification otherwise i'll get a lot of queries ki kya mcq mein uh, steps dikhana hai nahi now uh, as far as the time management is concerned because some students actually struggle to finish off the paper even in the time period of 2 and a half hours so uh, is there anything which actually takes more time than necessary 
any part of the syllabus? Ojaev, if you are if you are choosing the uh, Ojaev question uh, mm -hmm. in section B, mm -hmm. um, it is an optional question. You, if you want, you can choose it, but it's very scoring at the same time. It takes time because you need to very meticulously um, do the Ojaev question. You need to take care that you've actually. One more thing I want to mention in graph questions is don't forget to draw the king. That's a very common mistake that people forget to draw the king if they are starting from a larger value and not from something close to zero. And um, in the Noja question, you need to be um, drawing the curve in one go. You don't, you should not, you know, essay, fit essay. You should not be doing that. You should be drawing it in one curve. And it takes time because you probably need time to actually figure out on how the curve should be going and uh, stuff like that. That's one thing which takes time. Um, if you don't know the proofs very well, it may take time. One more thing I want to mention is, for example, in proofs of component to and dividend to dividend to, for example, hmm. a lot of people uh, just because it's a proof proof question, actually, uh, even if they don't know the steps of the proof, write the end result. Therefore, it is proved that this is equal to this. So I got the answer. But your examiners do look at the steps. So um, don't try to fool your examiner by actually skipping um, steps and try writing because just because you know the answer because it's a proof. Um, that is one thing and uh, that might take a proof question sometimes do take time because they are pretty long and uh, di uh, geometry questions diagram uh, diagram based questions may take a little time but otherwise actually the uh, maths board exam paper is pretty straightforward pretty simple if you know things well you will be able to complete it pretty fast within the stipulated time okay so uh, what i suggest is that if you have already looked through the mcq questions during the reading time um uh, the entire section A uh, should ideally not take more than 45 to 50 minutes. That should be your yes. outer limit in within which you finish off section A. Then the four yeah. questions that you have to do in section B, each one allot about 20 to 21 odd minutes, leaving about 10 to 15 minutes uh, revision time so that you go through each and every calculation once again, just to ensure uh, you have not yes. made any kind of uh, mistake. Uh, and of course, then the standard thing, always read the question carefully understand what is asked uh, uh, because uh, that's where most students end up making mistakes. Even if they actually knew the answer, they end up making a mistake because they didn't read the one question. More tip carefully. Like to give, yep. One more tip I'd like to give is that what, uh, whatever you get as your final answer, if they, are, if they have asked you what is the volume hmm. of the, for example, always box your final answer. It makes it easy for the examiner to know that, okay, fine, you have answer, hai, so marks de sakte. always hmm. box your final answer because it, and, Make your answer script as neat as possible is what I feel. Yeah, okay. And when it comes to uh, chat questions relating to mensuration statistics, uh, ensure that you use the correct formulae. Uh, and uh, finally, what happens, Teju, if there is a question which you thought you knew, you decided to do that question during the reading time, but finally when you are doing it, you get stuck. Now, do you keep on spending time trying to get it and hope to get it? Or do you kind of leave space and move on to the next one and come back to it? That's probably a better idea to uh, in terms of approaching the paper, isn't it? Absolutely. If it is a compulsory question, you have to be doing that question. Just leave space and go to the next question and try to solve uh, the other question. Hmm. At some point, if you knew the question when you were starting off your paper, at some point you will remember it. So you can go back to it. And that's why that's the reason why so I was talking about leaving that buffer of 10 to 15 minutes. That time is actually for going back to questions you probably didn't know the first time. And if it's something in section B and you feel that there's another 10 mark question which you know completely, um, and if you have time, hmm. you actually can do another question instead of this because if you if you feel that you don't know this question, this question and it's an optional question, you can go do something else yep. if you feel you know that entire uh, question properly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. The next three days are going to be quite interesting for the students because there's also Holi to celebrate. I have been telling students not to spend too much time celebrating Holi because this is much more important work. So uh, thank you very much, Teju, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.